Hello, and welcome to another presentation in the Iowa Vegetable Production and Management Series. My name is Donald Lewis, Professor of Entomology at Iowa State University, and today I'm going to be talking about a fairly well-known pest, the cucumber beetles. And it's one that most people would recognize, one that most people have some familiarity with. So we'll get through this as quickly as we can to talk about this common pest. Cucumber beetles come in two different kinds, as most people recognize. There's the spotted cucumber beetle and the striped cucumber beetle. For most of their life, we can talk about them as if they're the same thing. There's a lot of similarity, there's a lot of overlap, and we can consider them together. But when you get right down to it, it's the striped cucumber beetle that's going to be the bigger pest in vegetable production, particularly in muskmelon production less so in watermelon and other uh, cucurbits, but muskmelon growers and cucumber growers know this insect quite well. They have a complete life cycle, egg, larva, pupa, and adult, and the life cycle starts over winter where the adults are hiding under leaf litter, they're hiding in the tall grass, they're hiding under the loose bark of dead trees. They're out there somewhere just hiding and waiting for you to put your melon transplants into the ground. When they come out of hibernation, they begin to lay their eggs in the soil, and those eggs hatch into larvae that really don't cause us any damage um, by feeding on the roots, but they are down there under the plants, developing away, and by the end of the summer, usually by late July, those larvae will have pupated, the pupae will have gone into the adult stage, and they'll emerge from the ground. So there's one generation per year, and it takes one year to complete one life cycle. And it's the same for both of these species that we've just talked about. Now, it's the adults early in the season that cause the problem. When those adults come out of hibernation, they are hungry. They have not eaten since last fall. And consequently, they're going to be looking for their host plants, all the cucurbits, especially melons and cucumbers, as soon as they are in the field. And when they find those transplants or those seedlings coming up out of the ground, they will begin to feed on them. And that by itself can be quite destructive. They can nibble off the cotyledons, they can nibble off the stems, they can nibble away the plant to where there's nothing left if you have a high enough population. The big worry though with cucumber beetles is that they transmit the bacterial wilt disease. They went into the winter with the bacterium in their gut, and as they're feeding, they're either slobbering or defecating, and that bacterium that was inside the beetles is now in the wounds of the plant, and the plant is going to develop that bacterial disease slowly over the next three weeks to a month. When the disease gets severe enough inside the plant, the plant will just wilt and die. Maybe it's just one runner on a plant will wilt and die. But it's frequently after the vines have started to run that we see the symptom of bacterial wilt disease, even though the bacterium has been in the plant maybe for weeks at that time. So two problems, bacterial wilt disease being the bigger of the two issues for us. Well, what can we do about cucumber beetles? Well, we must realize that we cannot cure the bacterium after it is inside the plant. Therefore, we have to do something to stop the beetles from feeding on the plant and transmitting that bacteria. Crop rotation gets mentioned, but I think these beetles are pretty well adapted at finding their host plant, finding the foods they want to eat especially in small plots. It doesn't matter if you move the melons from one side of the garden to the other, the beetles are going to find them. But if you could put long spaces between last year's crop and this year, it might work. One of the major issues of the, of the last few years has been to use floating row covers. These are the uh, fabrics that are on hoops that are suspended above the plant, above the row, and that keeps the beetles from feeding. The day you put out the transplants, you put the wire hoops in the ground, you stretch the fabric over the wire hoops, you embed the, the edges down in the soil or weight it down with bags of sand or bags of rocks to hold it in place from the wind, and that 
screening protects the cucumber plants and the melon plants from those first cucumber beetles. Now eventually, floating row covers have to come off so pollination can occur, but that is one of the options that we have. Trap crop is another possibility where we use the, uh, a highly attractive crop around the outside of the planting, around the outside of the main crop. What that does is it attracts, at least in theory, it attracts all the beetles over to that highly, uh, highly attractive plant where they can be sprayed and killed without having to spray the main crop. Organically, there's a couple of sprays that can be used. Kale and clay and pyrethrum will both kill uh, beetles on, in the short run. Kale and clay is probably more of a repellent than a toxicant. So in organic production, those two would work. In uh, traditional production, there's a long list of insecticides that we'll talk about in a little bit that can be used to control those cucumber beetles from the moment the transplants go in the ground. Now, the other possibility is using systemic insecticide on the transplants. This can be watered in or applied to the soil, and that systemic insecticide will go into the plants, go up, and will kill the beetles as they feed. The question is, will the beetles die fast enough before the bacterium gets out of the beetle's body and into the wounds of the plant? How do we know if you have a cucumber beetle problem? Well, the easy way is to go out and do visual inspection. Just be looking at those transplants regularly and frequently. Weekly may not be often enough, especially in that, those first really hot, warm days of the, after the transplants go out. You're going to be looking at them to make sure they're getting water anyway. So you check them and look for cucumber beetles and the feeding activity at that time. Yellow sticky traps do work, but out in the garden, out in the field, yellow sticky traps tend to fill up with dust very quickly. They work very well in the greenhouse where the wind doesn't blow, but outside in dusty conditions, yellow sticky traps tend to not have as much advantage as what we might think. Again, all this starts immediately after transplanting. The day the, the transplants are in the ground, the day they are out in the open, the, they are fair game for the beetles to become, become, begin feeding on them. Over the years, we've noticed that unlike some other insects, this one is active in the heat of the day, often at midday, so you don't need to be out there early looking for them. You can't go out and look after supper and have much, um, have much success finding cucumber beetles, but at least weekly, more often if you can, count the beetles, and if you find a beetle per plant, you're in trouble. So it's time to make an application that would reduce that population. Often we don't find that many beetles, but we still find the damage of bacterial wilt disease. So this is a perplexing one and one that's a troubling one. Finish up with one little quiz question here. Which one of these is not a cucumber beetle? Well, we know right away that the spotted cucumber beetle is, the, is a cucumber beetle. It's also called the southern corn rootworm. But what about these other two insects? Which one of these is a cucumber beetle and which one is not a cucumber beetle? Well, as we look at them, we notice they're both about a quarter inch long. They're both yellow in color. They both have black stripes. But that's where some of the similarities end. As you look very closely at the stripes, you realize that the striped cucumber beetle on the right side has very perfect, very neat, very straight stripes. The tibia, the first section of the hind leg, um, right up closest to the body, is yellow on the striped cucumber beetle. Now the other insect that looks like the striped cucumber beetle is the western corn rootworm that your corn growing friends know very well because of the rootworm damage that can occur in corn. Notice that the stripes are kind of sloppy. They're not really neat. They may bulge in the middle. They may, some of them may be thinner than others. And the tibia, again, the um, section of the back leg is black in this case. So as we look at these, we can see there are differences. Now there's also differences in life cycle. The cucumber beetle overwinters as the adult. The western corn rootworm overwinters as eggs. And the western corn rootworm larvae that are in the soil from those eggs that spent the winter can only feed on corn roots. Now in the fall of the year on pumpkins, you'll find both side by side 
feeding on the rinds of the pumpkins, feeding on the rinds of the melon. So in the fall of the year, you can see both, but the ones you see in the springtime are the striped cucumber beetles, the, the western corn rootworm beetles don't show up until later in the season and are not a pest of cucumbers and melons, except for what rind feeding they may do at the end of the season. Well, that's our review of the striped cucumber beetle and the spotted cucumber beetle. The vegetable production guide for the Midwest has a long list of insecticides that can be used. There are some that are considered organic and some that are traditional and even some that are restricted use. So make sure you're reading and following label directions for whichever product you choose to use, but consult the latest version of the guide in order to find out the insecticides that you could be using to control striped and spotted cucumber beetle in the spring. And again, if there's rind feeding in the fall. Thank you for your time and attention. We'll be back and talk about another pest soon. <laughs>